Welcome back. So solving polynomial equations. Um, I'm going to just talk about kind of through examples to show you when you are dealing with polynomial equations, right? Once you study polynomials in general, you know, you typically study this in advanced functions in grade 12. But if your teacher was pretty good, you probably have touched on it also in grade 11, okay, as well in the functions course. All right. But here, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to show you, you know, kind of a few of the strategies that you could think about. By the way, solving polynomial equations is not easy. It gets annoying. You know, we do have graphing and software tools now to kind of help us and guide us. And I'm going to try to show you kind of what strategies to use. All right. So the first strategy is basically trying out factoring and using the factor theorem, or you may remember it as the remainder theorem uh, from grade 11. Now, if you do that, now, if you've forgotten the remainder theorem, okay, I'll, I'll put up a, a link up above there. Um, so with respect to that, um, there is a little bit sense of guessing, all right? And then I'll show you that kind of through the first example that you see there. Another method is you might try to see if you can group things together and then factor things out um, throughout to solve your polynomial equation. And then lastly, sometimes it just may take too long. Um, and if you do have graphing and software tools, and hopefully your teachers will introduce you to some, and if not, if you've watched some of my videos, you know, I utilize decimals extensively. So that's kind of what I will show you to use because here are three examples. You know, so the first one um, kind of is predetermined, right? And this is what happens in high school. You know, teachers kind of look through examples where you can actually apply maybe the factoring in some kind of a process. And it's great, you know, to kind of know what to do with that. The second example right here also looks pretty good. You know, all the coefficients are kind of nice. And this one, I'm going to try either factoring or grouping okay, things together to solve this one. But this last one, I mean, it has a fraction as a coefficient, it has decimals. I'm not going to bother in terms of factoring or grouping. Okay, I'll just go, all right, let's kind of um, graph it up and then see if there are solutions and then where can I find those solutions throughout. All right, so that's what we're going to do in this video. So let's start with the first one. So the first example, which is this one, I'm going to give it a go and kind of explain to you, okay, you have this wonderful equation. Now we're, most of the time we're used to solving linear equations where we're just manipulating things, collecting like terms, and then everything nicely works out and then we can isolate for X. Unfortunately in here, because you know this is a fourth order, it's um, very difficult to try to isolate for, for X just in our old school way, um, as we did with linear equations. Now, for quadratics from polynomials, if you remember, well, quadratics was actually not bad, right? We even had a quadratic formula which we could use, okay, to be able to solve, okay, for our unknown, our x, or sometimes called zeros, or kind of the roots of an equation. But here, okay, this is quartic, so this is to the power of four. So, how would we do that? All right. Now, please remember what I want you to always know with these types of things, like what is the meaning okay, of this? So I'm going to call this the left-hand side, and then I'm going to call this the right-hand side, okay? and this is what I like to do. Ultimately, you know, if I called this, let's say, my function f1, okay? and, I, and I equated it into 3x to the 4 plus 21x cubed plus 36x squared, that would have been my f1. Then, okay, on the right-hand side, I would have called this, let's say, F2, okay? And F2 is just basically a line, so 12x plus 48. So it is a slope of 12, okay, and, and, and a y-intercept of 48. If I plotted these two together, right, where they intersect is, okay, or are, if there's multiple intersection points, those would be the solutions to this actual equation, so I could right away jump into graphing and then seeing where those points are. But what if your teacher goes, you know what, kind of you might want to have to check and see if factoring works or something like that. So how do we proceed? So how we typically proceed with these, and, and this is what I recommend, is I say, okay, let's bring everything 
to one of the sides. Now, typically, I will bring it to the left-hand side. Okay, now if I shift these things over, so it's gonna be something like this, it's gonna leave nothing on the right-hand side, which is basically zero. Now, in this case, zero, this zero right here, it's like a flat line, right? Which, 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 which is just flat line, which crosses through zero on the y, and it's, it's basically your x-axis. So now, when we're solving this, what we're asking ourselves, if this is our new right-hand side, is we're trying to find the zeros of this equation. And if we want to be able to find the zeros of this equation, one of them is by trying to factor this whole thing out to see those zeros. All right. So how do we factor? Well, you kind of guess. So you're guessing numbers. Now, in, in, when you're in school, okay, especially in high school, teachers will kind of fudge these so that they do give you some nice solutions. In reality, unfortunately, this may not always be the case. Okay, but in school, okay, it, it's kind of it's called pedagogy. Okay, so in terms of like you know trying to learn it through kind of a school system, what I recommend is use your remainder or factor theorem to substitute for x and see if the remainder gives you zero. Because if it does give you zero, that means that that number is an actual zero of your polynomial. All right. And this works for polynomials, okay, in this particular case. So what I say is take x and then just guess. You know, take positive 1, minus 1, okay, you know, positive 1, uh, sorry, positive minus 2, and then so on and so on. So yes, we're going to be guessing. But remember, if we guess 1, then we can use kind of long division. And then, you know, it's going to be a little bit smaller and a little bit smaller. And eventually when we get to just a, a quadratic, then we can just use even the quadratic formula to find it, okay? So that's what we're gonna try to do. So first off, I mean, I can see that actually three, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna factor that three out so that it makes my polynomial much nicer to work with. So if I do that, and 48, so this is gonna be minus, um, so that's one, what is that, 16? So this is what we have here, okay? So there we have it. Now, let me substitute, okay, within here. So I'm gonna substitute, I guess I'll start with one. Zero definitely won't work, right? Because if I substitute zero, um, it's not gonna give me zero as a remainder to this, okay? So inside of here, I'm gonna substitute x is equal to one. Let me do that in fast forward fashion. All right, actually one worked. Okay, so one is a zero all of this. So what that means is if I, if I would graph this polynomial, then I would see that one of the zeros, one of the zero crossings would have happened through one. So now what I know is, I know that x minus one, right? Okay, that must be a factor of the original. Now, so what I have to do now is, I'm going to do a little bit of work. Let me get rid of this here, or at least make it smaller. So I'm going to, so this is x to the 4 plus 7x cubed plus 12x squared minus 4x minus 16. Okay, and I'm going to do, you know, my kind of division, right? So I'll do that in fast forward fashion. If you forgot how to do this for polynomials, link up above there for you. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back, okay? So after doing that, so what we have, okay? So we have now factored out three, we have factored out x minus one, and now notice our polynomial is smaller, 
and we can try to continue um, with this. So again, you know, you can continue just because you've used one, you can, you can try it again, okay? And, you know, we can continue with, um, you know, with these, okay, and so on to try to keep going. Um, so um, when, you're, when you're guessing, so now, you know, we're just trying to find this, okay? And then what it would be um, for this particular example. So I'm going to, you know, try. So I mean, in terms of one, I'm going to get one plus eight, 20. No, so one definitely won't work. Negative one um, definitely won't work as well. Okay, so let's now say, okay, so negative two, negative two, so negative eight plus um, two. So that's going to be four, four times eight, uh, 32. Negative two, so it's gonna be minus, this is minus 40 plus 16. What does this give me? So eight, eight, so that's negative 48. And okay, that works. Okay, so negative two, okay, so that gives me zero. So by the remainder theorem, and then so the factor theorem, so I can actually now factor out, so I said negative two, so it's gonna be x plus two. And I can do exactly the same thing. So now it's gonna be another factor. Now, the beauty here is once I do this, now I'm gonna get a quadratic. Quadratics are much simpler, right? I can just go ahead and, and use the quadratic formula or maybe you know I can even tell you know, by decomposition or something. So let me do this and I'll do this in fast forward fashion to see what we will have left. All right, so there we have it, okay? So after doing that, now notice I have this. Now this is a, a quadratic, and actually, you know, this is, this is not bad at all. Um, so I can certainly, you know, work with this, okay? Um, and I mean, for, for this one, I can actually see it right away. This is gonna be x, say, plus two, and then x plus four, right? It's gonna break that down, so I can factor that out. If you can't see it, you can use the quadratic formula, but I'm you know, pretty sure that you can kind of notice that this is what that is. So now it is fully factored. Um, so this looks like it's squared. So I have two zeros at negative two, and then this is that, all right? So now solving this, so that means this actually will have uh, four solutions for x. So one of the solutions, so one of the zeros is gonna be at, so x equals to one. From here, we're gonna have at negative two, so two zeros there, and then from here, we have another one at negative four. All right, um, and that would have been your final answer, okay? If you wanted to solve this polynomial equation. So it's a lot of work, now it has, kind of came up nicely, so all the way up to here. So this solving this has four different solutions for x, which means the left-hand side and right-hand side will equal if we substitute any of those values we just found for x, all right? So that's one example. And notice, I, I was guessing, right? I was plugging in one, negative one, you know, two, negative two, and then slowly until I finally got into a quadratic, and then the quadratic was actually simple. But if it wasn't simple, then I could have just used the quadratic formula and found my roots, okay, to that. So there you have it. That's using, you know, the remainder theorem or factor theorem and then factoring things out um, if it works out for you. Now, another example. So here's the second example. Hopefully this one is easier. Um, so let me copy this. I'll bring it down right here. All right, and now, um, now that we know this, right? So we have left-hand side. So basically, that left-hand side is just a, um, a cubic, okay? And it's you know stretched because it's a two, so it's positive. Um, so that's nice. On the right-hand side, notice that's a quadratic. So it would have been a cubic, okay, and then a quadratic, and then we're trying to see where the left-hand side and right-hand side are equal, so meaning where they intersect. 
So now finding this out, I'm gonna use the same strategy. I'm gonna move all of this, so all of this stuff to the left-hand side. Now let me align it. Um, okay, so that's eight x squared minus x minus four equals to zero. Once you do this, then what you're doing is, again, remember, then you're making the right-hand side equal to zero, which is basically a flat line, it's the x-axis, and all you're doing is where this polynomial is intersecting this flat line, which means where are the zeros, right, of this particular equation. Now, this is a cubic, so it's gonna be a little bit easier. Now, again, you can try factoring, right? You can play the game I did before. Um, so that's definitely something you can do. But in here, I'm gonna just show you that you can sometimes use it through grouping. And I am noticing, okay, what I'm gonna show you. So if I group these two things, notice I can factor out 2x from here, and it's gonna leave me x plus, and I guess it's gonna be four, okay? And then if I group these two together, and this is gonna be just sheer luck, but notice if I take out the negative one from that, I'm gonna have x plus four again. And notice, now this, of course, is something that we would love to kind of have right here. Oh, and I apologize, because I took out a squared from here, because this is cubed, right? And this is squared. So that's what we would have there. So now I can, because this right here is a factor of this term, and this right here is a factor. So I can take this out, because I grouped those things in, and that leaves me 2x squared minus one, right, equals to zero. So I've actually just found the factor, which was negative four. So that's one of the answers. Now in here, um, this isn't as nice, but it is a quadratic, and not only that, it's a quadratic, and notice, because of the negative, okay, this is a difference of squares. So this is gonna be 2x minus, sorry, 2x, square root of two, x minus one, and square root of two, x plus one. So that's the difference of squares, right? So difference of squares, if you don't remember, okay, I'll put up a link up above there for you. So that's definitely probably from grade maybe 10. If not 10, then 11, but I'm pretty sure you've uh, done it in grade 10, okay, depending which math you took. So there you go. We've actually factored this whole thing out by grouping things together and then using difference of squares. So what are my answers? My answers are x is equal to negative 4. That's from here. From here, if I solve this, so square root of 2x minus 1 equals to 0. So bring this over. 1. And then divide both sides. So, so that's going to be one of the solutions. And then the other solution, because it's a difference of squares, it's going to be negative. So those are my three roots or three zeros to the equation. There we have it. All right. So that's another way and method. So you can look for those, but I'll tell you from my personal experience, sometimes this is hard to see because you might be grouping the first two, but when you try to group the second, you may not get the same factor out. And if you don't get the same factor out, then you can just forget about the grouping and just goes, all right, I got to go back and try to factor this whole thing out, okay, on my own. All right, so that's another example that might um, help you. So one is the factoring, one is, you know, here you've seen the grouping things together, and if you get the same factor, you can factor that out, and then continue from there. And now the last one, if that doesn't work, this is for the final example, which is honestly in real life what most uh, people will use anyways because they start using software tools throughout because they understand the concept. But the idea is you have to understand the concept that like, oh, I have an equation. Oh, and in my equation, you know, there's basically just polynomial. Okay, if it's polynomial, you know, I can go ahead and utilize and think about just finding zeros. So in this case, I'm not going to factor or group anything because the coefficients are just too ugly. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, you know, maybe, okay, so within here, um, so I'll just show you. 
So this is my left hand side. This is my right hand side. Now, sure, you can bring everything to one side and then find the zeros of the equation. You can definitely do that. But also don't forget, you know, if I call this function one equals to function number two, if I if you graph these two on one chart, then where they intersect, okay, so the value for x where they intersect, okay, is the solution to this. All right. So let's let's try that. I'm gonna do it through kind of decimals. So let me bring up decimals here, split it in half. Okay, let me plot the left hand side, so squared minus 0 0.9 x cubed. All right, so that's that. Okay, it's not going to be pretty, but no, that's okay. So that's the left hand side. The right hand side is 7.8 x to the 4, so it's some kind of a quartic. So it looks like it's going to be looking upwards. We know all of that from studying these. Okay, so notice, there you go. Okay. Um, and these two points, so this one, and then here where they also meet, those are your two answers um, for x. All right, so it's going to be negative 1.041, and then it looks like it's 0 0.98 or something of that nature. Okay, now the other way that you could have done this, okay, I'm going to kind of do this and then put the other one is you could have moved everything to one side. So let's, you know, let's say if I move all of this to the left-hand side, so negative 7.8 x4. Um, I'm going to try to put them in order here. That's That one stays there, plus 3 quarters x squared, and then plus 7.32, right? So equals to 0. So if I do that and I plot this so negative 7.8 x so we know that it's going to be quartic function minus it's definitely going to be opening downwards because of that negative um, 0 0.9 x cubed um, plus 3 over 4 x squared plus 7.32 all right and so notice now the solution should be the same as the other ones, right? So now here we're looking for where it crosses the zero. So that's that and that, and notice it's exactly the same, right? Negative 1.041, it's probably rounded, right? And 0 0.98, I don't know, maybe it's not rounded, but um, so those are the approximate answers. And notice if I plot this on, Okay, notice where those two intersect is exactly at the same x, right? So if I'm going to stretch this out, okay, so here, okay, let me just do this. So notice this zero and then this intersecting point. Notice it's the same thing. So I hope that makes sense to you. That's a tool that you can use and then... Also visually now you understand, like all you're really doing is mapping left-hand side and then right-hand side and then seeing for those intersecting points. So in this case, we have kind of two solutions um, in here and you can uh, proceed from, from that point, right? Onwards and then see what happens. All right, so that will be it for this video. It's kind of the introduction to solving for these. I'm pretty sure that they're going to be bugging you about factoring these things out. Hopefully they don't give you anything chaotic, okay, like this, but don't be surprised. You know, most likely at least the cubic that you're going to have to factor and then you can use the quadratic formulas if needed, but that's how you kind of can go about it. All right. Thanks for watching. See you in future videos. Bye, everybody.